We're Eamon and Beck, and two years ago we gave up our expensive Toronto apartment for, well, something a little more alternative. We were gonna sign a lease for a year, and now we've totally changed our mind or we might buy a Sprinter van. And while giving up the comforts of a traditional house may seem crazy to you, living in a van has allowed us to travel to seven different countries and feel right at home wherever we end up. We don't have a mortgage or monthly utility bills and living off grid has taught us to really appreciate the little things in life. <laughs> in short, van life makes us happy. And instead of telling you why, well, let's just show you. We last left you guys in Ireland. We we're headed for Ackle Island with basically no plan. We're driving along and we spot a kiteboarder and all of a sudden we've pulled over and Eamon's going kiting. That's just the way life works sometimes, I'm guys. I'm really excited for you. I'm pumped. It's this little lagoon. There's only one kiter on there. Out 150 meters, it's only waist deep. So it's nice and cruisy. The wind should be nice and consistent. Good for a 910, which I have a nine size kite. That's perfect, let's go! First things first. Oh, I haven't worn this in a while. Whew, I'm a little bit nervous. Hi, baby. I've been struggling so hard, and I made such a stupid mistake. I thought that this line was a power up to add power because I thought it was a little light. It was a D power. <laughs> All right, well, I think it's too little too late here. I'm way down the other side of the pond. The winds died, started to rain. I had fun for a little, I guess. But there's literally no houses or road around me. And she's way over there. I don't know how I'm gonna get home. I'm trying to drive to him now on basically a one way, which is stressing me out. Again, I'm on the wrong side of the road. And I'm nervous about him, so I'm just like a whole big stress bag. Come on. Come on, chicky poop. Oh, man. Oh, this is no strange sight to you guys. Stranded on a kiteboard. I must be the worst kiteboarder in the world. <laughs> well, here's what my Tuesday afternoon looks like. Sailing her in. Bring in the jib, boys! Bring in the jib! <laughs> oh, man. Eamon has made it to the other side i just went and tried to drive around the little lake and it's not possible it's just like marsh and bog and they're saying to me that unless i have a wetsuit i couldn't even walk down to where he is it would take me an hour and it would be terrible um so essentially he has to do that on his own and i figured it would be better if i was waiting here for him as opposed to like driving around in circles and trying to figure it out i don't know i'm feeling very emotional like i feel bad for him i know that he's frustrated i wish i could do something but i can't so i think it'll be an hour, an hour to two hours until Eamon gets back here Ugh. what are we working with here holy got everything semi-tidy Let's start the journey. Ow! Semi-spiky. Oh, great. Just what we need. How deep is that? Oh! Oh, it's deep! Oh, it's deep! First women in the ditch. I love kiteboarding. Oh, this is like way steep grass. We got this death barricade of spikiness. I guess to prevent the sheeps from coming in. Going up. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going up. Oh, oh. Yes. How you doing, sir? Hope you have a good day. Oh. Oh. I love kiteboarding. You were really worried for him. 
god! <laughs> I had to start where I was freaking the flip out, dude. Are you alive? I'm good, Thank you. What do you have to say for yourself there? Oh, not much. <sighs> Worst kiter in the world over here. Oh my gosh, baby. I cannot tell you how happy I am to have Eamon home safe and sound. To make him feel all warm and comforted, I'm gonna whip up a chai latte using our handmade chai blends. They are warming and healing and basically a hug in a mug. So I'm gonna make it with oat milk and I think he'll appreciate that. This should be a requirement for all kiters that go on a super big adventure. <laughs> they get a nice cup of chai afterwards. Oh. While we're on the topic of chai, if you guys are interested in trying our handmade blends that we blend in Toronto, Canada. Or if you didn't know, this is our company. Yeah, this is our tea company. It'll be linked in the description box. We make two blends, one with caffeine, which is what you're going with, with some oat milk, and a rooibos, which is caffeine free. You can have it hot or cold, and it's just all natural, beautiful goodness. Made with love. <laughs> Too hot. Oh, it's a little hot. <laughs> The real joy of van life is that you can stay somewhere for as long or as little as you'd like. And so, we stayed on Ackle Island for another four days. Eamon spent most of his time improving his kiteboarding skills, and we became great friends with our neighbors. Together we shared barbecue dinners and a late night dance party. Oh, that oh, looks so good. good. And give him a shot of this, back. We got the lid here. Yeah, that's nice. And that's a cauliflower steak. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the other day you asked an Irishman if you could stay here. Yes, I asked him and he said to me, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, there are campers, they stay here with their whole families and they eat here and they drink here and they are very loud and have music. And I said, no, we only sleep here in a van. So it's no problem. Yeah, you can stay here. <laughs> Now, four days later, we've got our tarp set Crank up. it up, Michael! The most music, barbecue <laughs> session. <laughs> Breaking the wall. Welcome to real life. <laughs> it's never easy to say goodbye to new friends, but the North Coast was calling. Hey, sir, I'm looking to get directions to Westport. Excuse me? Excuse me. <laughs> You speak English? We have just arrived to the, oh, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, Sleeve League parking lot. We're going to go up near Bunglass Point and do a little hike about and see what we can see. Somebody's very excited. To meet the neighbor. Oh, <laughs> this is our neighbor today. Someone in a very impressive rig called the Big Rig, or the Big Red. David hasn't wanted to go out on the hike yet because he's hoping that we can meet these people, but I'm thinking we'll have to meet them when we get back. My question for the neighbor is how on earth are you driving these roads? Yeah, that's true. In our van, I'm like... <laughs> Hopefully they're there when we're back. We can meet some new friends. Slash Big Red, if you guys are fans of the channel or you're watching, Please get in touch. We would love to do a van swap. <laughs> oh, now that's an idea. we chose to focus our time in Ireland on the wild Atlantic way there are lots more touristy places but as you can see this one we have all to ourselves this is actually some of the highest cliffs it's like double or triple the size of the cliffs of mower someone got mad at me for saying that wrong in the last one um, so it's pretty incredible to have it all to ourselves not to have to pay to come see it all that kind of good stuff good find also, I feel like most people don't come out at sunset because it's dinner time yeah. and they're usually got a schedule. <laughs> so A, it's the best light, but B, there's like 10 people on this entire hike. 
This is a really, really spectacular hike, isn't it? Go back to the van for some leftover curry. Do we have to eat the leftover curry? <laughs> <laughs> Anything warm will do. Let's go. See you later, guys. Enjoy the mountain. Are you sad to see our neighbors not here? <laughs> Big Red is gone! The park, oh look. This is why. No overnight camping or campers allowed CCTV in operation. And I just spotted a whole bunch of cameras. So it's like 9.30 and the sun is basically gone. So you and I should figure out where we're going to sleep tonight. There's a beautiful view, narrow road, two small car parks. A kilometer from here. Geez, Diane, you know how to pick them. Not bad, huh? Amazing view. So I think this is a trailhead for a hike. We had to go through a gate to get here. There's no signs that say you can't park here, but holy smokes. <laughs> Ah, leftovers. Thank you, baby. Ten door, por favor? Si, claro. <laughs> leftovers just was not gonna fill us up. So, we've done peanut butter toast. We like our peanut butter toast cut into fours. <laughs> I like it with coconut oil. Oh. Becca likes it au natural. Well done. Mm. Okay. It's late, so we're gonna get ready mm. for bed and we will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, friends. Morning, everybody. Family, friends, anyone in between. Hope Good morning. you slept well. I slept really well. Not you, Super them. quiet, very peaceful. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Very excited about the location we found last night. Mm -hmm. We've got such a nice view, we're gonna go enjoy our coffees. On the porch, on the veranda. <laughs> I'm just kidding, outside on the hill. Hello. Good morning. Morning, how are ya? We didn't last very long outside. Truth is, in Ireland, even when it's beautiful out, which it is, it's still very windy and very sheep poopy. There is nowhere to sit. <laughs> Mornings like this before Johnny on the spot were strange, scary, and stressful. Now that we got her. Some might even call them enjoyable. We usually like to burn a little Palo Santo for any other passengers on board. <laughs> it's much appreciated this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Do we have a plan for the day? Uh, yep. Beauty, let's go. All right, the plan for the day is to go to Glenvie National Park. It's actually Ireland's second largest national park. There's beautiful castles, some lakes, and then my plan is to sleep on the beach this evening. Let's finish that and hit the road. After a two hour drive, well, yep, we're hungry again. That's pretty normal. <laughs> so we're making lunch. We've made these beautiful wraps here. And if you might notice, my co-pilot is not joining me for lunch. <clears throat> for those new to the channel, she suffers from misophonia, which is a fear of sound of Hatred. chewing. Hatred. Hatred. That's a strong word. Mm -hmm. And this is a particularly squishy wrap. Listen to this. Don't do that, Eamon. Can you believe that since being in the UK, we have not seen one single castle yet? I well, we saw the one from the road. Oh, Blarney? Ow, those things are really spiky. Those are what I had to deal with when I was kiteboarding. <laughs> those things are deadly. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, there's plenty of castles to go around, so I guess that's what we're doing now. Buddy, where are you taking me? 
<laughs> I think so. Um, to the national park here, there's a beautiful castle that you can walk around the grounds. Just thought it'd be nice to stretch our legs and see a castle. <clears throat> it's got to be good because we're parked right at the gates. How much further is the walk? Oh, we got to wait. <laughs> hey guys. Hello. So after Ooh. a unexpected four kilometer walk, <laughs> we've made it to Glen Bay Castle and it's pretty cool. It's in the middle of this forest. It was built in the 1870s and is, what did they say? 1.5 meters thick, the, the walls. walls. Also, we didn't bring any money or any water or any resources, so. <laughs> Bad planning. For next time, bring seven euros per person so you can actually tour inside the castle. Still nice to walk around, but I think it would have been really extra neat to go inside. Woo! Can I get you a tall glass of water, my love? Porfa. More. So Beck has actually also heard about a cool spot that we can get onto the beach. So we're gonna try and head there and probably spend the night, afternoon, evening on the beach. Ice matcha latte. Oh my goodness. We are not at the beach. Ever since our little dinner date with our German friends. You pass me the birds. Birds up. Buck, 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 buck. <laughs> they were showing off their barbecue skills. Uh, and once Eamon gets something in his mind. Well, I've been thinking about it for a while, but I thought it'd be a great addition for the kind summer. To get a grill. <laughs> Well, here we are in the barbecue section. We've got our charcoal grills on the left here, the gas grills on the right. And uh, we're a little bit SOL. We're a little too big or too small. The small one would be good, but it's circular. I'm looking for something this shape, rectangular, that will fit on the back box. I know it's, I know it's a thing because I've seen them before, but this would be nice, huh? Yeah, it would way be. Way too big, way too big. Too this big. is for like tailgating with the boys. We don't need anything. Like well, that. the way you and I eat, it's like here, 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 right there. I mean, I don't think it's too big. We just can't fit it. It's too big. Okay. I know better than to come into these places with Eamon because he comes in for one project and always, always, always ends up spending hours in there. So, because he's going to be another hour or two, I'm going to go to the van. Just lie down. I'm knackered. Barbecue was a failure. Barbecue was a failure, but show him, baby. <laughs> Our new banana hammock! Yay! I'm not sure about it. Not sure on those thick, thick hooks we're using, but it'll be good for now and then we'll see how we go. Yeah, these are like table legs. I had to kind of modify They're table this. Legs. <laughs> but it's super practical and That's it doesn't cool. swing. That's cool, dude. Let's try it out. Alright. How many bags of crisps have you had? <laughs> you done watching The Bachelor? Buddy, stop exposing me! The first the chips and now The Bachelor? I'm not watching anything. What are you talking about? We'll meet them at the beach, huh? Yeah, we keep telling them we'll meet them at the beach. Goodbye. I won with the happy pair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, we told you we would meet you at the beach. We just didn't realize it would be <laughs> at six in the morning. <laughs> Steve, Dave, you're onto something here. <laughs> Let's start the day. Beautiful. Hi, good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Hi, who's this? That's 
swimming. Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> We're doing well, great, thank you. Holiday. You're getting a nice morning. Oh, it's beautiful. It's lovely. We got up for sunrise and went for a swim already. Did you? Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. just yeah. walked the beach. That's enough for an old lady like me. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Take care. Have a nice one. Yeah. And we've made it to the giant causeway. Oh, not there yet, bud. We're not there yet, but we did go right to the visitor center, which they tried to charge us 12 it's euro per persona. 12.50 pounds, we're in Northern Ireland now. Excuse me, pounds, yeah. So we um, decided not to do that, and we found this car park for eight bucks. So now we need to walk a little bit. Where'd I'm you go? We are approaching the Giants Causeway and there are two sides to how this came to be. My personal favorite is the myth side, but he's gonna fall into the grass. <laughs> the myth is that there was this giant living here called Finn McCool and Finn McCool was having some beef with the Scottish giant across the way. So he, being a giant, picked up a piece of this coastline and chucked it onto the water to create a pathway to go and beat up this Scottish giant. I like to think that's how this came to be. And if you're like me and you want a more logical explanation, well, basically it has to do with volcanic eruptions with lava over 60 million years ago, and it created these little pillars, which are known as the causeway. There's like 40,000 of them. 40,000. <laughs> you look handsome this morning, by the way. Thanks, baby. How did I do on my memory test? Really uh, good. <laughs> Pretty good? <laughs> From the Giants Causeway, we drove seven kilometers along the coast to White Park Bay to soak up every bit of this very rare Irish sunshine and enjoy a little picnic lunch on the beach. We've got some leftover pasta from last night. Beck made an unbelievable pesto. Yeah, I feel like every time I cook and clean, the camera's not on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I'm usually cooking, cleaning, and filming. Speaking of cooking and cleaning, we have a new idea we'd love to share with you guys. Yeah, we're very excited. Basically, we're always looking for new ways to engage with you. We're gonna cook for you. So every country that we visit along this journey of traveling around the world, we're gonna post, let you know, and all you have to do is hashtag EBCookWithMe, and we'll choose a winner. Um, so the next country we're going to is Scotland. So basically there's only two requirements. You have to live in Scotland, you have to have purchased our cookbook, and then you'll pick a recipe from the cookbook, and we'll come to your house and make you breakfast, lunch, dinner. Not che all three. Che cheesy popcorn, you choose, whatever you want. Whatever recipe it is that you'd like. So just to clarify, if you live in Scotland and you've purchased our cookbook, just in the comments below, put hashtag EB cook for me, and we will select a winner and come cook for you. Yeah! <laughs> After Scotland, the next one will be England, so just to warm the English up. I know we got a lot of English homies But in the for town. this video, it's just for Scotland. 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 Okay. Ireland was amazing. We'll check you in the next one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If you guys liked it, let us know. 